Hello everybody and welcome to another uh, laptop uh, teardown video uh, from Maker's Outpost. Uh, this video will be a teardown uh, to basically get to the cooling system of a HP Pavilion DV6 uh, with a model of uh, DV62157WM. It's a basic uh, media uh, entertainment laptop. Uh, this particular model's got a Core i3 processor. This is a, this particular laptop I've looked at before for our customer a couple of years ago, or longer than that. This definitely has been a while. But we're going to crack this puppy open uh, and go through it and uh, double check the cooling system to make sure it's not you know it doesn't have the the typical laptop blocking that we've seen. And then uh, when we're all done putting it back together. I'll be uh, doing a system uh, operating system refresh on it uh, for them because they're going to be repurposing it for another uh, another task. So without further ado, here we go. Obviously the first thing is I crack out the uh, peripherals, the things that are in the way, and start taking, cracking open the doors and whatnot. This is just the hard drive access point. And I think the Wi-Fi may be under here. I'm not exactly sure. But we will find out. We got the hard drive here. Let's see here. Sometimes these aren't really secured in. They're just basically held in by friction. Nice little SATA laptop drive. Okay, let's put that puppy aside. Yep, here's the Wi-Fi. What's nice is this one's already marked as far as uh, antennas are concerned. Now, I'm not going to be disconnecting that until I know I absolutely have to, which is <laughs> sometimes I don't have to depending on how it comes apart. So it will pop open the door for the memory access. Get it out of the way. And these particular screws don't typically actually come out the rest of the way. They're they're held in by their own little, like retaining clips. And that one will come out later for the uh, CD-ROM drive or DVD-ROM. All right, pop these puppies out. Okay, got the memory. Okay, this one has been upgraded. Got the uh, eight gigs of RAM. Nice, nice. So it's definitely been upgraded. Uh, means I've upgraded. Uh, must have upgraded it for them when they uh, when it was first brought to me. So we're gonna go and pop this screw, which is for the DVD-ROM drive. Now let's see if I can get the uh, screw out of there. That in there, and the arm drive pops out. Okay. Now, okay, these are the covers. Covers. This particular, these screws right here are actually marked keyboard. They've got a little keyboard symbol. It's very difficult to see. Uh, it may be difficult to see in the video, but uh, these have to come out in order to get the keyboard out. So these won't be retained inside with the, the tape, the masking tape trick that I use. They have to come out all the way. Okay. I'm just going to pop the memory. Make sure there's no screws underneath of it. And there is not. And here's another keyboard screw right here. That one I might be able to keep in there. 
these other two were a little too short for this. But this one should be fine. All right. Now what we'll do is just use the same trick. The masking tape trick over on these guys. Just loosen them all up. That one may have to come out. No, I'm gonna be able to just keep that one in there. Actually, we'll keep that in there. I did this one first. Yes. All right. Put little pieces of masking tape on. That way, we don't have to worry about popping these screws out. They'll stay where they belong. This seems time consuming, but sometimes <laughs> your past experience has actually been more time consuming hunting down the screws and trying to figure out exactly where they go. All right, now these screws that are all indicated with the uh, little arrows pointing at them have to come out too. Now these aren't able to be held in with that trick. Okay, now the fact that there are screws that are actually marked keyboard, that does kind of tell me that the keyboard has to come out before this puppy will come too much, too much further apart. This cover looks like it has to come off first. It's very difficult to remember exactly how each laptop comes apart time and time again. You always end up looking at so many of them. Okay, that is not. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, I think I see it. Get my. Favorite tool for doing this work. Right here. Sometimes this is the, the, the worst part of it. I'm just trying to figure out how to get some of the plastic apart. laptop was a pain in the rear to get apart the first time. Ah. Have to kind of convince it from back here, it seems. Okay. Okay, make sure it's no one there. Nope. No other screw there. There we go. Whew. The weirdest thing about this design, this has to come off, but it's still attached. Okay, the keyboard, there are screws underneath and there are screws up top. Really weird design. Designs like this kind of can make things difficult to work on. 
So you have to work around these ribbon cables without putting too much stress on them while you're trying to pull the keyboard. Because then once you put the keyboard, think she stuck. I may have missed a screw. Yes, we did. Well, you don't just go yanking on things. Gently pull and tug. There we go. You'll have that. Because I missed a screw. Things flopped out all together. <laughs> One shot. Pull the keyboard? Eh, maybe not. Does not look like I had to. I'm trying to verify the design and the layout. But it does make it easier to clean. Okay, now, does the lower chassis actually separate and how? Those look like I have to pop the. All right. This is going to be an interesting. This is an interesting design. And unfortunately, this is the way it goes. Sometimes laptops are a pain in the rear to tear apart. And that's honestly why I think. That's why I think. Honestly, they don't get fixed. People would rather replace and repair. That's why it's too, too expensive. They are a pain in the rear to open up. But I'll tell you what, I enjoy this. This is fun. Sometimes it's like trying to solve a puzzle. Speaker bar. All right. This is probably to the webcam. This looks like it's for the power connector. Alright. So I'll have to pull these. Good thing that's marked. piece of screw <laughs> there is a screw there holding this uh, upper chassis down now okay the touch pad now based on what I can tell the LCD bezel Looks like it has to actually come off. Yep, looks like it has to actually be detached. So, what we're going to do is we'll come over here. Stupid sticker, come on. There we go. Pop the video. And pop the, pull the four screws holding the hinges. Yeah, now this is a complete dissection here. So in a way, this one is a complete teardown.
Okay. Uh, gently. Move the LCD. All right. Now. Now she should be able to come apart. No other screws holding her in, holding her down. All right, is there anything back here? What else are you stuck at? I'm just making sure it's just I did. Another screw. Okay. Always just take your time with it. Not a race. Oh, what's this? Interesting further complication to the design, huh? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. I wonder if nobody likes working on laptops. It does. There we go. That's the rest of it. Phew. And what a lovely thing that was. Wow. Pain in the rear. Hello. Alright. So now I've got those disconnected. Right. Okay. Now motherboard. Okay. The sign up. Hard drive connection is right here. It disconnects. Get that out of my way. I'm gonna have to disconnect the Wi-Fi card. In order to finish pulling the system board out. So disconnect this guy. And there's a screw here, as indicated by a white arrow. As always, when you see that, that means when you reassemble it, a screw does go there. Because usually the rest of them, it's all held in the clam, to, clam design. All right, so we got the system board. Yeah, this is almost a complete teardown. A few miscellaneous boards, you know, there's the power supply interface, USB ports, front headphone jacks, blah, blah, blah. That's left behind. But it's pretty much 100% complete teardown. So we are system board. And obviously the, the typical cooling system that we've seen time and time again, multiple different laptops, very similar design, always a little bit of a difference. So then here's the heat sink. Again, it has the torquing order, one, two, three, four. So we're gonna work backwards from that torquing order to remove it. Four, three, two, All right, pop that puppy loose. All right, that's a permanent heat sink, a permanent heat sink. All right, so before I get too far, take my uh, hopefully this tears. Uh, yeah, this looks like the newer compound, the newer heat sink compound I prefer to use. We'll make this cleaning it the rest of the way with alcohol not much easier. Okay, now get that away. And of course, grab our isopropyl alcohol. Trying to avoid making a mess. as possible. Okay. 
All right, let that dry. Okay, now, now one of the things I like to do is check the, make sure the process are seated properly, especially for a, a PGA pin grid array. So undo that. Pull the processor. Make sure everything underneath is fine. Make sure the processor seated again. There. Okay. This is still something I check while I'm here. Never hurt anything. Okay. Now, let's get the main board out of the way and turn our attention to the cooling system. This particular model looks like it has three screws. Let's hold the housing all together, so we'll pop them off. Alright. Aha, right. pull it apart. Okay, good. Yeah, this one is not bad at all. I've had this laptop looks like I'm barely even used. So when you take them apart, that's basically what you want to see. A nice, clean, open uh, cooling fin area. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my cleaning supplies. And my handy little toothbrush or toothbrush <laughs> paintbrush just still kind of loosen up anything that might be heavy just dust it out and clean here. Here we go, putting her back together again. All right, this was good. Now I know it seems like it can be a waste of time, especially the one that's clean. But the problem is, is you never know. You don't know if it's going to be clean. So what we'll do is just go ahead and brush off to loosen up anything that could be stubborn. Okay, now. Okay, so, so go on like this. So, cooling compound, or heat sink compound, whatever you want to call it. Okay, not much. Perfect. All right, so now as stated before, you get your heat sink down. All right, now 
the working order. So there's one. Just tighten it all the way down. Because they're spring loaded. So two. The springs actually hold it down. Not that even on the monster on the post. And it's the springs actually do the work. Okay. And number four. That's your torquing order. So now the cooling system has been verified to be clean. Plug, make sure to plug in the power connection. And since we're already this far in, I will replace the BIOS battery. battery and a brand new one there we go now what I'll do really seriously tape you're not going to cooperate with me tape that's on the old battery And that'll be thrown away. Okay, BIOS battery has been replaced. Everything's pretty much ready to be. <laughs> I hope so. I put that in the right spot. Okay, so let's put that aside. Grab the lower chassis. Take my oversized toothbrush. Just do the same. big clumps and just give it a quick dusting okay so here's where the cooling system will seat no obstructions all right so okay There we are. Put it back in place. Uh oh, there we go. All right, all right. Okay, all right. So I go plop anything together. Remember that one screw. That's by itself right here. Plop it into place. All right, that'll help kind of hold things together. Tightening up the connections here, the ones that I can anyway. Okay, this will go here. Get a power connection. I actually absolutely love the way they do the newer power connections like this. And I'm seeing it more and more on laptops. But I will tell you, it used to be a pain in the rear back in the day when um, uh, you go to change out a, go check out a, a broken power connection on a, on a laptop, and here there's nothing you can do about it because it was soldered to the main board and it cracked the main board and did some serious damage like that. This is this is nice. I really like that style, that layout. So now we gotta slowly piece her back together. Grab the upper chassis and just kind of do the same. Kind of make sure all the big dust clumps are loose. Right. 
so and put the touchpad controllers in. Okay. seating over here and why okay so why aren't you completely seating over here okay just out of the line now. so we'll put those screws back in real quick before I forget about them no Here, okay, there's a screw that goes here. And I think it was this little fella. All right, that little fella, I'll hook that up together. All right, this will be for the uh, webcam coming in off of the uh, main screen. Main screen. Okay, make sure everything's going to snap together here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, let's go snap these guys together. All right, beautiful. All right. Grab the LCD bezel and get it tied back in properly. All right, there we go. LCD display bezel. All right. Four screws. Okay, I had a feeling those were the wrong ones. That's why I sometimes try to label them. And sometimes I forget to label my bins where the screws came from. There we go. That's it. Those guys tighten back down. See if this will work. Yeah. Either cross threaded somewhere along the way, or it's all the buildup of uh, Loctite. So that should take care of that. That's the LCD. Okay, so obviously this is the webcam. And this is the uh, Wi Fi. Let's see, the best way to wrap this probably put the webcam in first. Now, now if you really wanted to be worried that somebody's going to hijack your camera in uh, this particular laptop, you could always just not hook this back up. That way you don't have to worry about covering the camera. But then again, uh, if you ever wanted to use it for any reason, like Skype or something else, you'd have to open up your laptop and connect it back up. So sometimes the easiest way is just to go ahead and cover the camera. Right, so she wants to be still in there. 
Just a little stubborn there. Not that I'm not used to with these things. And obviously the Wi-Fi antenna. Well, it's down. And goes down into the rabbit hole. All right, Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, now. The uh, speaker board. Speaker bar. There were three for this guy. I do remember that. Connection. All right, so we got the speakers hooked up. We got all these major power connections hooked up. That guy hooked up. Hook up the LCD display. We don't want to be tearing this puppy open to hook this thing back up later. All right, snaps into place. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So that looks to be fantastic. Now these guys are going from the bottom. That's the Wi-Fi. That's the hard drive interface. That's from the bottom. Memory's from the bottom. Okay. So now comes the interesting thing. Kind of, kind of blow up the keyboard a little bit. All right. And then the upper cover with the capacitive touch sensors that are for the power and audio buttons and everything. blah 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 okay now this has to be connected before we can put the keyboard in connect it connect it okay push that out of the way keyboard Whew. Crazy design. Put the ribbon cable in, little flat ribbon cable. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, this is always a fun blast. All right. Okay. Ribbon cables in. No, don't go with the connection yet. There you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. Grab the screws for the keyboard. What I really like about magnetic tips. Fortunately, this nice little tool set doesn't have magnetic tips. This small. All right, there we go. There we go. Got to convince it to go back together. All right, that's back. That's back. There we go. There we go. Should have <laughs> turned my phone off. Okay, well, we're still recording, which is good. 
Sorry about that. Now we're back to underneath. So we're gonna put make sure the hard drive interface is hooked back up properly. Uh, Alright, there's that guy. I slide him out of the way. Wi-Fi card. Okay, and the associated holder screw. I think one of the options this does not have with it is the Bluetooth module, which I think goes right here. So here we go, these are marked. Unfortunately, so is a Wi-Fi card. Primary and secondary antennas. Uh, there we go. Put the power. There we go. Wires out of the way. Those are nice and tight. That's in there. Hard drive interface. So now what we can start doing is actually putting all the screws back in real quick. Screws back in. Alright. Okay. Gotta get that guy back in there. Alright, there's a screw, which I will put in later, when I'm over to that point. Okay, that's for the uh, CD-ROM drive, DVD-ROM drive, which I'm going to take care of now before I forget. Pop you in there. I'll put the screw back in for you. All right, that guy's back together now. Keyboard screws, let's go and get these guys put back in. All right, now we'll tighten up all these guys. Keyboard screw, okay. Don't need to over torque any of these. Remember, they're just um, inserts in the plastic for the most part. And it's just a laptop. You're not like holding together a car. Alright, so I got the memory back in. Okay, memories. Alright. Hard drive. All right, all right, all right, okay. So those guys are there. And then, yes, I think I am missing one screw. I think it's right here. Nope, 
slammer. And I figured it out where it goes. There's another keyboard screw back there. Keyboard screw back here. It's weird, it looks like a screw hole. It's funny. There it is. Okay. All together. Okay. This goes back together again. I shouldn't need access to this guy anymore. place yeah it's easy to kind of forget exactly where screws go especially when you see a hole that looks almost like a screw hole that happens all right all right i won't put the battery back in just yet that way i can continue uh, proper testing all right back together again awesome now Grab the power adapter that I set aside. Plug her in. Ugh. There we go, it's over here. Alright. There we go, powering up. Everything sounds good. Fan kicked on just fine. I'm actually surprised I didn't complain about the BIOS. But it's booting up. Everything looks fine. And that will conclude this video. So if you liked what you saw, if you have any, uh, leave a like. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. Or uh, find us on Patreon and uh, uh, show support. Uh, thanks. We'll catch you later.